Welcome back guys to another Clash Royale video. Today we're trying out the Hog Rider Valkyrie Freeze combo. Uh, we're going to see how well it does in the 2800 trophy range. So let's go ahead and take a look at some replays here. Here we are guys with the first replay. This was against a level 9 who was actually using a spawner deck. And I was kind of surprised how well I did in this battle here. Because I don't have a lot of AoE damage in my deck here guys. But you do have to consider that the spawner decks, it takes a lot of elixir to get all those buildings set up. Uh, so you have to try and keep the pressure on, and you have to try and do counter pushes, as I am right here whenever they place a building down. So he placed the goblin hut down, I went in on the left hand side with my hog rider and some spear goblins. And what I did there guys, is I actually waited a couple of seconds, even after he placed down the baby dragon, before I dropped down the free spell. And I just wanted to make sure that he wasn't going to place any other troops there. And right here, I dropped the Valkyrie for defense. The Valkyrie guys is a super strong card. She's great on offense as well as defense, and that's one of the strengths with this deck, guys, as all the cards are extremely flexible. You're not limited to just the Hog Rider Valkyrie attack strategy. As you'll see in this replay and the next ones, I often use the Hog Rider with Spear Goblins or the Valkyrie with Spear Goblins for attacking, and all the cards are flexible. They can be used on defense as well as attacking, like the Valkyrie you just saw right there. She's a great tank card for taking out princes and stuff like that. But once again, he's invested a ton of Alexa on the right hand side. So we're going to be able to go in with that Hog Rider on the left hand side, sneak in there and take out that left hand tower, and give ourselves a 1 to 0 crown lead so far. But watch what happens in the next minute and a half here guys. He's got both of his buildings set up here and I don't have any spells in my deck that really do some damage to those buildings. So unfortunately he will be able to set up a pretty big army here and set up a pretty strong push in the next few moments. So watch what happens here. Minion Horde is going in there. He's going to go ahead and throw down a baby dragon way in the back. Um, the minion Horde kind of just died out before he even reached the tower. And now right here he's got a royal giant coming in here with a baby dragon and take a look at my deck here guys. I don't have anything really in my deck uh, to take out this strong of a push here. Um, so I'm going to try and freeze it, but with the help of that rage spell, he is able to take out my tower. So a lot of elixir was wasted there guys trying to defend a tower that was going to die anyways. So sometimes guys you have to accept a tower as being gone, then try and go for a counter push and put some pressure on him and force him to spend elixir defending instead of supporting his push. Right here, things really aren't looking good. But throughout this battle, um, he only has the Fireball in his deck, so that minion horde should be able to take out that Royal Giant pretty quickly because he doesn't have enough Alexa to use that Fireball. And watch this guys, I snuck in the Hog Rider way in the back there with the free spell, putting on some offensive pressure, and just overall preventing him from being able to set up a strong push. Once again, he has the Barb Hut and the uh, Spear Goblin Hut down. We're going to set up an Alexa Pump there, just as a first... Uh, line of defense and distracting his troops and once again with 10 seconds left We're gonna try and sneak in there with the hog rider to take it out now The great thing here guys is with the hog freeze combo You can pull out clutch wins like this in the final couple of seconds in a battle I went in with the hog rider as well as the minion horde froze all of his troops Which allowed my minion horde to take them all out while they were frozen and right here guys We're gonna go in with the hog rider as well as some spear goblins All we need is a quick couple of hits to finish it off for the three crown victory Let's go ahead to another replay, guys. So here we are, guys, with the next replay. Now, this person here was also using the Hog Rider Valkyrie strategy, but he didn't have the free spell in his deck. Instead, he had the Zap spell as well as the Lightning spell. So we're going to see how these two decks compare, because we're both level 8, and we have pretty equal level cards. But right at the start here, we do have that Electric Pump in our starting hand. So we're going to go ahead and place that down right in the middle there. Now, he has a Valkyrie marching up here, so we're going to wait half a second drop our own Valkyrie way in the back there and hopefully they should meet in my zone so my tower will be able to support her. And watch what happens here. He uses the uh, lightning spell to damage my Elixir Pump as well as my Valkyrie. So I know he just spent 6 Elixir there. So I'm going to try and rush the right hand side because I was pretty sure he was low on Elixir. But unfortunately for me, he had just enough Elixir to get that bomb tower down which completely nullified my push. Now this deck guys is a little bit weak to the bomb tower. Um, so we're going to see how I deal with that throughout this battle here. But right here, we're going to wait a second and start building up that Alexa once again. He's going to try and sneak in here with the Hog Rider and the Minion Horde. Of course, I have the arrows ready to take him out. And I'm going to use my own Minion Horde to take out his Hog Rider. And watch what happens here, guys. My Minion Horde, they each have like one health left. But with the help of that free spell, they're able to go in there and take out that tower all the way from full health down to 1500 health. So really great use of the free spell there and that's an example of how to maximize 
uh, your Elixir because instead of just letting those uh, those minions die, they were played on defense. I was able to turn them from defense into offense and go in there and do some damage to that tower. Now watch here, he's using the Valkyrie. I can't use my goblins to take out that Hog Rider, obviously because the Valkyrie is up front. So I'm gonna use my own Valkyrie to distract his, pull her away from the Hog Rider, and then go in with the goblins to take out the Hog Rider. Overall, a very effective defense right there. Now unfortunately, that Valkyrie will be distracted and get killed before she does anything. But fortunately for me, that meant he had to spend more Elixir defending, allowing me to build up an Elixir damage. Now right here, we're going to try and go in with the Minion Horde because I'm pretty sure I've seen the, the entirety of, of his deck at this point here and I know he doesn't have the arrows. Even though he does have the Zap Spell with the help of the Free Spell, I should be able to go in there and get some damage done to the tower. But fortunately for me, he didn't use the Zap Spell there. He used his own Minion Horde to try and defend. So my Minion Horde, with the help of the Free Spell, was able to take him out and then do some damage to the tower. And now right here, because he used his Bomb Tower way on the left-hand side, we're going to try and sneak in here with the Hog Rider on the right-hand side because even though that left-hand tower is all the way down to 100 health, you have to try and switch up sides. So right here we're able to go with the Hog Rider, freeze those minions and then use the arrows and take out his tower all the way down to 471 health. Now at this point in the battle, we're going into overtime. His tower on the left is all the way down to 100 health and he's going to play super defensively with that Bomb Tower. So all I need right at this point is uh, two sets of arrows to take out that tower. Right here I try and go in with the minion horde to take it out because the minion horde is out of range of the bomb tower. But watch what happens right there guys, I missed that set of arrows and as we'll see later on in the battle, I got extremely close to not winning the battle just because I missed that set of arrows. So right here, he's going to try and be super aggressive. I had the free spell because I just wasted my arrows on that tower, I have to use the free spell to stall those minions, allowing my minions to take him out. So right here, Hog Rider's coming in, I have to use that electric pump to distract him, and right here I'm actually able to hit the tower with that set of arrows, but unfortunately he has one more bomb tower ready to go to distract my troops. So right here there's 10 seconds left, I'm desperately trying to cycle through my cards here. With 5 seconds left, I'm going to use the free spell, but my goblins won't make it, and with 2 seconds left I finally throw the arrows. And with half a second left before the battle ends, the arrows land and take out that tower, giving us the one crown victory. Let's go ahead and take a look at one final replay here. This was against another level 9. Now all these replays guys have been at the 2800 to 2900 trophy range. Uh, so this is a fairly competitive deck. But right at the start here, this opening exchange, as you'll see, doesn't really work in our favor. He's going to go in with the Hog Rider as well as some Spear Goblins. We're going to try and use our own Hog Rider and our own Spear Goblins to do a counter push, but he does have the cannon in his deck to distract our Hog Rider. And unfortunately, our Electric Pump is way at the back of our deck. So that's an example, guys, as to how the starting rotation of your cards can kind of affect the gameplay. Because if we had that Electric Pump earlier in our hand, we, could have, we would have been able to distract that Hog Rider. But our tower at this point is all the way down to 1300 health, so that kind of sucks. Now the main idea with this deck guys, is a lot of people use weak troops to take out the Hog Rider, like Goblins and Skeletons and stuff like that. So having the Valkyrie in there to support the Hog Rider, able to take out all those weak troops, allowing your Hog Rider to do more damage to the tower. But like I said in the first replay, this deck is extremely flexible, so you don't always have to use that attack strategy. As you'll see, I rarely use the Valkyrie with the Hog Rider, because the Valkyrie, honestly, is a great defensive card as well. And that's where she really shines. But in this battle here later on, you will see me use her with the Hog Rider combination. Right here we have the Electric Pump down right in the middle there. He's going to try and sneak in some Goblins here. We're going to use the Valkyrie to defend that. Now unfortunately, the Valkyrie won't be able to go in there and do anything because the minions will take it out. So right here, he's got some skeletons as well as some minions. We're going to go ahead and arrows that because to this point in the battle, I haven't seen anything else that's worthy of arrows. So I'm not too scared using it at this point. But he was able to do some damage to my tower. So we're a minute left in this battle here and things aren't looking good. Our tower on the right hand side is all the way down to 450 health. But right here, we're going to try and defend in the, against those goblins because we don't have the Valkyrie in our hand. So we're going to go ahead and use those minions. So now that we're in double Elixir, we're going to go ahead and set up the Elixir Pump as a first line of defense. And then we're going to start playing super aggressively because our tower is all the way down to 450 health. We can't really sit back at this 
point in the battle. We have to play aggressively. So here we go. We got the Valkyrie down. She's going to start making her way up to the bridge. We're going to support her with some goblins as well as a mini horde. And then go in with the hog rider as well. And watch this, guys. Drop the free spell. Minion Horde able to take out all those troops and do some damage to the tower. Valkyrie able to do some damage to that cannon as, as well as some of those ground troops. And overall just doing a ton of damage to that right hand tower. And one push all the way down from full health to 450 health. So at this, at this point in the battle, it's a lot more even. And once again, we're going we're gonna to go in with the Hog Rider and the Valkyrie combo. Following them up with some minions. And now one of the reasons, guys, I don't tend to use the Valkyrie with the Hog Rider. That's, that's 8 Alexa right there. Adding in the free spell is 12 Alexa. It's a lot easier to fit in uh, the Hog Rider with some goblins. But right there, we were able to go in for the 1 crown victory. Anyways guys, that's going to do it for today's video. I hope you liked it. If you did, make sure to hit the like button. If you want to see some more Clash Royale videos, make sure to subscribe. I will be putting up videos every single day. Anyways, thank you so much for watching guys. We'll see you in the next video.